Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you a great new technique for skin color correction. How to get the right skin color? This problem originates most of the difficulties and questions. Indeed, the color of the skin has one of the primary values for our perception. From ancient times, we have learned to notice the slightest deviations in skin color, since it says a lot about the health or mood of the person with whom we communicate. On YouTube, you can find a lot of videos about skin tone correction. In some of these videos, it is suggested to make a selection of some skin area, average it, and do all skin correction based on that color. Now, I will show you why that is not enough. For example, I have a photo. I will switch a color value in the color picker window to LAB and take a color from the girl's forehead. In the analyzer window, I also switch to the color model to LAB. So I got luminance of 71, A equals 8, and B equals 15. Now I'm going to load another photo as a reference and try to find the color with the same lightness. Here is the color that I took from the second photo. As you can see, these colors are almost the same. The differences are very slight. That is, both photos have the same color of the skin. But as you can see, the skin in these photos looks different. That is, it is impossible to describe the color of the skin by a single color value. Skin color is a whole gradient, in which both hue and saturation change with brightness. In addition, there is color variability. To see this clearly, you can use a new special tool, Gradient Analyzer. I turn it on. This analyzer shows the path of the colors that I added into the palette. I'll switch to the first photo and add colors. I will add colors from the girl's forehead since it is the most even color. There is no blush or any reflections here. The color can be added to the palette either with the help of an eyedropper tool or by holding down Alt plus Shift and clicking on different areas of the photo. You need to cover the entire range of brightness when adding colors to the palette, from the lightest area of the skin to the darkest. The analyzer constructs the path of this color. The top graph displays color hue. Saturation is displayed in the lower graph. As you can see, the hue in this photo varies slightly, but the saturation drops off in highlights. Now I'm going to add colors from the second photo. I will start with the highlight and continue by adding the color from the forehead. So I have got the second color path. I can bring one or another color path to the foreground by switching between a work image and a reference. As you can see, these paths are quite close in highlights, but in shadows, the saturation of the reference image strongly increases. Also, hue has slightly shifted to yellow in the reference. That is, the hue value is bigger here than in the work image. As I mentioned before, the upper path shows hue, and the lower path shows saturation. Desaturated colors are at the bottom. Saturated colors are at the top. Now, let's talk about color variability. This analyzer also shows variability. I only added colors from the forehead, where the skin color is very uniform. That is, there is no variability here. Now, I can add colors from other parts. For example, from the nose or cheek or from the area around the eyes. The path gets wider. The wider it is, the greater the variability. We see here that in the shadows, the hue varies in a rather wide range. Let's return to the main photograph. I'm going to add colors from other parts. We see that variability is lower here. So with the help of this tool, we have finally got the opportunity to collect complete information about the skin color in the image. So now you have a tool that allows you to compare and adjust the skin color between photos or for example, between your photo and some perfect skin color that you have lifted from the internet. This analyzer works in real time, so you can add some adjustments and see how they affect the skin. For example, if I bring together the color rays around the skin tone, the color path on the analyzer will shrink into a thin line because the color variability is reduced. Or for example, I can change the color of the skin in the highlights or shadows so as to make this path more similar to the reference one. I can also increase saturation of the shadows.
Here is before, here is after. The skin color in the photos has become almost identical. This way, you can customize the skin color by hand. But in 3D LUT Creator, there is a tool that does this automatically. I'll reset all the settings, go to the Curves tab, and in Edit Menu, I select Match Color Gradient to Reference. A window appears where I can adjust matching parameters. There are some settings here, but as you can see, my color gradients already fit pretty closely. Here is the original photo, and that's what happened. Notice that these settings do not affect the degree of matching of the initial gradient to the reference, but they affect the tools it is done with. The first parameter allows you to match the luminance. This setting places two points on the luminance curve, so that the boundaries of these two color paths are matched. The second parameter is responsible for the color variability. If I set it to zero, I will get sepia from a photo, but the resulting path reflects the reference path. If I set the variability too high, the colors that won't refer to the skin, for example, eyes, lips, or background, can change dramatically. This tool affects the whole photo. But do not be afraid if some areas get out of control. You can always fix them with color grid or apply a mask. The third parameter adjusts the use of saturation luminance curve. If I set it to 100, the saturation path is completely transferred to sat lum curve. And the last thing that this tool does, it puts points on RGB curves to completely fit these paths. That is, if I don't use sat lum curve, RGB curves will move in such a way that paths will coincide. You can adjust these parameters to your taste. Here is before, here is after. Let's compare now. Here is the reference, and here is the photo I worked on. That's how it looked before. This tool does roughly the same thing that I did in the video about skin color correction by numbers. It just does it automatically and allows you to control such parameters as variability and saturation. Now I will try to do it with another photo. I will reset the settings. I will also reset the palette. I will take this photo as a reference. So I need to add colors from the reference to the palette. I hold down Alt plus Shift and click on the image. I will add dark areas where there are no reflections. Now I'll go to the work image and also add colors from it to the palette. It is better to add color from the hand, since there is a whole gradient of brightness. I add the highlight from the forehead. LED light was used in the shoot. The white balance is quite strange here, so I would like to correct the skin tone. You can sort the palette by luminance, so that it is more convenient to analyze it. I'm going to open Gradient Matching Tool. Probably, I won't have to match luminance so much. Let's see how variability affects the image. You should not decrease it much. That's what happened. Here is before, here is after. Let's compare. As you can see, the skin color has become very similar. I do it very quickly and precisely without any difficulties. Also note that you can save reference palette colors to a file for future use. You can also create a base of your color paths and use them to adjust your photos. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Don't forget to try it. See you!